Hello guys, uh, good evening to all, late evening, this is uh, Mike Paduan, we are back to our latest uh, weather analysis for this Monday through Wednesday, October 16 to 18, 2023, and this is another week of giving you the very latest on the weather situation across the Philippine Islands and the Western Pacific, this is our English version brought to you by Typhoon 2000 in partnership with Naga College Foundation, Aboitis Power, Bank of the Philippine Islands, Avenue Plaza Hotel, the local government of Naga City headed by our Honorable Mayor Nelson Legacion and our Honorable Congressman Gabby Bordado of the 3rd District of Camarini Sur. So before we proceed, we would like to again promote the uh, Comunidad Climate Action Center. This is a tool or a software that you must need in case that you are an LGU or a company that are willing to fight climate change. So this is a great tool to be uh, resilient on your day-to-day -day activities. And it's a good uh, product to uh, be aware always on this uh, impending climate change. If you are willing to uh, uh, test this out, just uh, click on the uh, banner at typhoon2000.ph. It will be forwarded to a Google form for you to uh, submit. And upon submitting, Mr. Aaron, uh, uh, Aaron Cabasal, will contact you or you can also contact him directly at 0976-163-7245 or email him at iron.cabasal at commodidad.co for more details on this uh, product okay so uh, LGUs like uh, Shargao, um, Quezon City, Makati, Tagig already uh, have this uh, climate action center so if you are willing to include this in your uh, next year's uh, budget you, uh, you can contact comunidad so that uh, they will explain to you what it what it is all about okay so uh, let's begin with our update here's the latest graph set for today monday evening until uh, tomorrow tuesday we have a uh, developing low pressure system which formed over the coastal waters of uh, Central Vietnam. This is LPA 99W and it's uh, becoming an active one. It's been uh, upgraded to medium chance of becoming a tropical cyclone within the next 24 hours at 25 to 65% chance. It's currently quasi stationary. Actually, for the next uh, three days to five days, it will just over the area. Uh, near Vietnam along the coastal waters and it will move in the general direction of the Gulf of Tonkin until it dissipates over northern Vietnam so this could bring uh, lots of rainfall and uh, risk of flooding and landslide is expected from this low pressure area even if it doesn't uh, reach tropical depression status but models are uh, expecting it to become a minimal tropical depression so all eyes on this system it's currently quasi stationary not moving and uh, it has some um, southwesterly wind flow over Kalayan Island group and the uh, Panatag Shoal okay so these areas are having some cloudy conditions with uh, occasional rains and thunderstorms and the trough or the easternmost trough or extension of LPA 99W is affecting the western sections of uh, Luzon across Ilocos region so expect uh, afternoon and evening rain showers and thunderstorms and uh, up here over the uh, northern portions of the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea, Taiwan, uh, Batanes Cuba Islands, the coastal waters or the coastal areas of extreme northern and eastern Luzon and the coastal waters of northern Bicol will be under the influence of the uh, northeasterly wind flow. This is already the start of the Amihan uh, most likely by November, we are still awaiting Pagasa's announcement of the uh, uh, official start of the Northeast Monsoon. So it's uh, currently a week amihan. So expect uh, visual conditions of 15 to 
40 kph okay nothing uh, to worry about it is bringing some cooler conditions across these areas actually here in naga we are experiencing already a slight decrease of temperature uh, with only uh, 36 to 39 degrees uh, heat uh, index okay so uh, so far that's the uh, situation across the philippine islands it's normal all across uh, the other islands like mimorapa besides and Mindanao, except for uh, during the afternoon evening uh, you ha we have this uh, usual uh, visitor the uh, thunderstorms or local thunderstorms so don't forget to bring your umbrellas and rain gear and uh, we have a new equatorial trough here far away across the uh, central and eastern Micronesia. There is still no uh, succeeding LPAs as of this time. And we have a frontal system here, which is generating the first uh, hint of a shear line. But it is only uh, expected to affect the uh, Philippine Sea and the coastal waters although some of the models particularly the european model that i'll show to you later the rainfall uh, accumulation forecast for the next three days it could reach the eastern sections of uh, central luzon including northern Bicol. so expect some showers and thunderstorms within the next three days and for the fast animation so there you go this is now the quasi stationary or barely moving LPA 99W over the coastal waters of uh, central Vietnam near Danang. Okay, while good weather across the Philippine Islands except for western Luzon because of the uh, eastern trough or extension of LPA 99W and the uh, northeasterly wind flow across the uh, coastal areas of northern and eastern Luzon. And the coastal waters of northern Bicol. It's all clear across the Western Pacific. And uh, if we take a look now at the zoom in solar animation, this is from windy.com, UMETSAT. You can uh, see the uh, global lightning detection as part of the newest uh, uh, product of uh, Windy. So it's uh, bringing thunderstorms here across the uh, cloudiness west of Luzon and also across the Visayas, Cebu, uh, Negros these are localized thunderstorms and also here over the island of Mindanao now let's take a look at the easterly wave uh, dot com this is a Chinese website that shows to you the ensemble uh, forecast from the European model this is the latest as of uh, 8 a.m. Uh, this morning, based from the uh, forecast this uh, this morning, okay. There's a uh, possibility of a uh, low pressure system uh, coming over to the vicinity of Guam before the end of October. So we are going to keep an eye on this system because uh, uh, this may be a threat to our country. Right now, the uh, forecast suggests that it will uh, track towards the uh, northwest, but we still don't know. A sudden change of the uh, forecast up here will shift the track towards the Philippine Islands. So we are going to monitor this and we will let you know next week if this will be a threat to us or not. Let's hope it's not. And the curvature is also expected. Here's now LPA 99W, that uh, block one. It means uh, it's only a tropical depression, 1000 HPA. So let's hope it will dissipate quickly. And if we take a look now on the wind forecast for the next three days. So we begin on uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Here's the uh, weak Amihan or the uh, northeasterly wind flow affecting the eastern areas of uh, Bicol and also here across northern and uh, eastern Luzon and likely it will be uh, renamed as Easterlies so it depends on the direction of the wind Thursday afternoon we have uh, still the northeasterlies across uh, the eastern and northern uh, coastal areas of Luzon and on Friday 
the uh, northeastern wind flow will uh, weaken and it will be just uh, concentrated here it will be just concentrating here over the uh, Batanes Group of Islands. Here's LPA 99W over the Gulf of Tonkin. Not a threat to our country. Now let's take a look at the rainfall accumulation forecast for the next three days. So today, Monday until Wednesday, we expect this afternoon or evening rain showers and thunderstorms across uh, almost all parts of the country. Becoming more frequent over Palawan, Mindanao. Eastern sections of Luzon. So this is a possibility of a shear line that could bring rain showers and thunderstorms across uh, the eastern sections of Cagayan Valley down to eastern portions of northern Quezon. So that will be the forecast of the rainfall accumulation. Okay. And if we take a look now on the latest El Nino update. Since it's already October 15, actually October 12, it was released, the latest uh, forecast. And we are still at El Nino uh, uh, level, okay, uh, at moderate levels as of this time. And based on this new one, uh, recent observations are considering at least a strong event with 75 to 85% chance through November until January. So by next month until January, we will be reaching at the strong level uh, line. Okay. So that's going to be 2.0 degrees centigrade. And, uh, but uh, they said that 3 in 10 chance of a historically strong, when we say historically strong, these are the very strong event which rivals the 2015-16 El Nino and the 1997-98. And we are also including the 1982-83 El Nino because it recur every 15 to 20 years. But since it's only uh, hmm, seven years since the last or eight years since the last uh, strong a very strong El Nino, so most likely it will just within the strong or medium or moderate uh, uh, event. Okay, so strong El Nino events increase the likelihood of El Nino related climate anomalies. It says here, but it not it does not necessarily add, equate to strong impacts locally. So it may be uh, the rainfall will still be there, but it's not on the average okay so the drought the effects of drought is not much because it's not a very strong El Nino but somewhat it will affect the agricultural areas because the rainfall is quite low right now and uh, only LPAs and the uh, shear line could prevent this uh, uh, dry conditions so let's hope it will bring it will still bring rainfall across the country but uh, we cannot guarantee that so here's the model predictions this is the strong El Nino okay so most of them are uh, reaching it here majority of that and uh, but it's still under uh, moderate levels so here's the uh, graph this is the three month uh, period up to six months so it will remain at El Nino levels 100% uh, until January and then it will start to weaken uh, down to this is around 60% between April, May and June and we will be back to uh, neutral conditions by May, June, July. However, the effects will continue for three months. Okay, when Pagasa says it's the end of El Nino, the effects still is still there for three months. This is not a weather uh, system; it's a climate system, so it has a delay. Okay, so the effects of El Nino is still forthcoming. We will be feeling the effects beginning uh, likely this uh, last few months of 2023 until uh, probably. June and July of 2024 
but we are be we are con co coinciding with the start of the wet season but still below average so watch out for uh, freak tropical cyclones occurring during the uh, first six months of 2024 so we are ready about that and uh, we're still uh, watching the western pacific for a possible tropical cyclone uh, uh, threat this uh, november and december so we'll keep you updated on that so this is the uh, latest uh, uh, forecast on the uh, precipitation for the philippine islands so this is uh, from the october issuance so november until uh, april of 2024 so this is now the latest so we will remain under below normal percentages okay so that will be 70 percent uh, december january february still the same january february march although it's the gun to 60 percent below normal and february march april it will again reach 70% below normal so we expect to be uh, less rainfall uh, in the coming months so please take all necessary precautions particularly the agricultural sector that will be greatly affected by this impending moderate to strong El Nino let's hope and pray there's no tropical cyclone during this uh, last two months of 2023 Okay, so there you go. That's the latest for this uh, late Monday evening. And we will return again in the middle of this week. This is Mike Padua saying uh, good night to all. Have a great uh, week ahead. Stay safe always. And thank you so much for watching our channel.